Hello everyone and welcome to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. This is Dawn Polly from D. Polly Designs and I'm so glad you could join me. Today I get to work with the Lawn Fawn products and I'll be making a fun interactive card for you. Let me show you the products I'll be using and I will be using the Lawn Fawn Spiderweb Background Drop and the sweet spider stamp set which has tons of cute little spider images and it has candy and lots of awesome sentiments you can also purchase the coordinating die set to go with it and then i have the swivel surprise die set this is such a great set and i can't wait to show you how easy it is to make an interactive card with it so let's get started the first thing I'm going to do is make my background. I have this plastic container I'm going to use to spray some Distress Oxide spray onto a piece of white cardstock. Some people use a box, but I like to use this so that I can just rinse it out and keep using it. I'm using the Spice Marmalade color and make sure you shake it really good so that it mixes up because the sprays tend to separate and stuff settles at the bottom. And then I'm going to spray a generous amount onto the cardstock because it will lighten up when it dries. So I want to make sure I put enough color down. Then I'm going to blot some of the dark orange spots up with a piece of paper towel because I was going for a dark background, but I didn't want dark orange spots on my cardstock. And this really gave me the look I was going for. And I'm a little impatient, so I like to dry my background with my heat tool to help it along. And look at how nice that came out. I think it just came out really great. Next, I'm going to die cut the spiderweb background from some white cardstock because I'm going to use some more of the Distress Oxide sprays. For the spiderweb, I'm using the black soot color. And for this, I'm trying not to put a lot down but I am trying to make some dark black spots on the frame. So this time I won't be blotting it with the paper towel. I even spray a little bit more while I was drying it. I think it came out great. And then I'm just going to set it aside for later. To save some time, I went ahead and stamped out all of my images and die cut them with the coordinating die. And then I used my Copic markers to color them in. I will list all the colors I used in the description box below. Okay, let's start to create the swivel mechanism for the inside of the card. I want to show you all of the pieces of the swivel surprise set so you know what each piece does. This is the ring and the inside of it also creates the smaller circle. And then we have the main circle. This is um, the mechanism piece. And then the small piece is the connector piece. And then it comes with two different banners, which are for the sentiments. Okay, so for the first piece we're going to work with is the mechanism. Before you cut all of your pieces out, you will want to coordinate what colors and the look that you want for the inside of the card because that would be important. Okay. As you can see, when you die cut it, it has a bunch of score lines on it. First, we're going to fold along the top score line and we're going to fold it under just like this. And then we're going to use a bone folder to really burnish the score line well so that it folds really nice because that's going to be important. And then we're going to fold back the first diagonal line. And then again, we're going to burnish that score line as well. And then we're going to fold the second diagonal line and we're going to fold it backwards. And we're going to go ahead and burnish that one. And then we have another horizontal line, which we're going to fold that one back and that one's right underneath the diagonal lines and when we fold that one down we're going to then burnish that one as well and we have one last fold at the bottom of the mechanism and you're going to fold that back and you're going to burnish it with the bone folder 
I just want to point out it's very important to burnish the score lines really, really well so that the mechanism folds really easy. Now, let me show you how to fold this. The first time you do it, it can be a little bit tricky. You're going to take your two index fingers and push in these two little triangles right here. And you'll notice it makes this like little shape that to me, it kind of reminds me of like an arrow pointing in one direction. And that's it. That's the entire mechanism right here. And like I said, it reminds me of an arrow. Now I'm going to assemble it inside of my card. I'm using a four and a quarter by five and a half card base, and you're going to need some double sided tape. I'm using some score tape and what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the mechanism over and there is this flap right here and I'm going to go ahead and add my score tape to the flap. I'm adding two pieces of the quarter inch double sided tape and I'm going to overlap them so that none of the double sided tape hangs off of the mechanism at all. I remove the liner from the mechanism and then I'm going to flip it over so that the score tape is on the back of the mechanism now. And I'm going to put it on the inside of my card base. I take this end of the mechanism and I line it up right against the inner fold of the card base. I center it so it's in the middle of the card. It doesn't have to be exact, but get it as close as you can to the center of the card unless you want it further down in the card because you can do that as well. And then go ahead and press down to adhere the mechanism. And that's it. If you want to test it, you just pull this tab right here and you will see how nice this uh, mechanism works. This is just such a fun card to make. The next pieces we're going to be working with is the ring and the small circle and then the main circle. I went ahead and sprayed both of them with the spiced marmalade spray. The small circle, I put a light coating of the spray and then the main circle, I put a dark coating. I decided instead of putting an image on the small circle, I wanted to stamp the sentiment Happy Halloween onto it. As you can see, I am stamping it close to the top of the circle because the bottom half of the circle will be behind the mechanism. And so if you want to be able to read the Happy Halloween, you have to put it close to the top of the circle. Now we need to attach it to this top piece right here. As you can see, I'm lining the circle up with the curve of this piece and it fits really nice there. It lines your circle up exactly where it needs to be. So when you pull your mechanism, your circle moves in and out with it. I'm using some score tape again, but this is not actually part of the mechanism. So if you didn't want to, you don't have to use it. You could use liquid glue. I press it in place really good and then watch how nice the mechanism just moves it all around. Next, we're going to put some score tape right here on the bottom of the mechanism. And then you take the ring piece, which is the outer part of the smaller circle that we just used. I decided to go with a black ring and we're going to slide it through the end of the mechanism like this and attach it to the score tape, but make sure it's over enough and doesn't touch the fold of the card so that your card can close. And then this is how the mechanism is going to work. It moves in and out like this. And it's just so much fun. I can't wait to finish putting the rest of the card together. Now we're going to work with the little connector piece. As you can see, it has a score line on it. And we're going to fold that up towards you and make it like an L shape. And then I'm going to burnish it really well with my bone folder to give it a really nice crease. Then we need to put some adhesive where the X is on the mechanism. It's a little hard to use score tape, so I'm just gonna put some liquid glue, but you can use whatever you like. Make sure to put the liquid glue in the entire triangle so that it holds the connector in place really good. And then I'm gonna line up the two X's and place the connector piece right here on the glue. And I'm just gonna hold it in place until the glue dries a little bit. Next, we're going to work with the main circle die piece, 
And what we're going to do is put some tape on the bottom side of this flap right here. Now you can use score tape or liquid glue. It really doesn't matter. Then you're going to take the circle and you're going to center it in the middle of this ring right here. And when you feel like it's centered, you're going to press down to make sure that it's adhered really good. And look at how nice this is working so far. This is just such a cool card to make. Then the next thing we need to do is attach the last part of the mechanism. And we're going to put some score tape right here onto the pull tab. I'm using two layers of the score tape again because I want the whole tab covered. And then I'm going to peel up the liner. And then all you need to do is close your card because everything is all lined up for you already. And when I close my card, I press it in place. And then when you open it, you have your swivel surprise, which is really cool. And it really wasn't that much work putting it together. Now let's start to assemble the card. I adhere the spider web that I stamped and die cut out on top of the orange circle. I wanted the hanging spider to be holding a candy bar, so I glued the candy bar to the spider's front legs and then I adhered it to the bottom of the web. I adhered the other little spider and the lollipop on top of the web as well and look at how adorable this is. I just love this. Let's do the curved sentiment now. I placed the white cardstock for the sentiment on my sticky mat that I'm using in my Misty. It makes it really easy this way. And then I place my acrylic block on top of the cardstock. And then I curve the sentiment to match the curve of the cardstock. It's so easy to do it this way. And then I stamp it with my VersaFine black ink so that I get a really good impression the first time I stamp it. Then I take the sentiment and I adhere it onto the edge of the black circle. And look at how nice it looks when everything swivels all together. It just, you could really see the swivel when you add the sentiment to it. I just love it. And disregard the little black circle. I have no idea how that got in there. Okay, let's finish this card up. I adhere the spiderweb backdrop to the front of the card. And then I adhere the entire card front to the white card base. And then I'm going to take all my remaining spiders and candy and I just adhere them onto the spider web. You can put them anywhere you want. I also made one of the spiders hanging down from the web like it's going to get the little candy corn. And then to finish off the card, I adhere the sentiment in place. And that's going to complete my card for today. Once you do one of these swivel cards, it's very easy to make a bunch of them in no time at all. You can make all kinds of swivel cards like for birthdays, Christmas, Valentine's. The possibility is endless. I want to thank you for joining me on the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. I would love for you to leave a comment below and let me know what you think of the card. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel and their other social media platforms so you don't miss out on any great inspirational videos. Also, check out their website for any new releases they might have. And as always, I want to thank you for spending your time with me and I hope you have a wonderful day.